everybody, this is Teresa over at whatwouldyourhairdressersay.com. It's an interactive blog for teenagers, mostly, sometimes parents, but mostly teenagers. Um, I want to talk about a topic that used to come up all the time when I did hair. And that was how girls oftentimes, and guys too, um, but girls would more talk to me about these kinds of things, um, would get blindsided thinking that someone was reliable, um, kind, generous, sensitive kind of person, and only to figure out that they were really a shady kind of individual. And the question always came up, how did I miss it? And unfortunately, I've had my fair share of destructive relationships also, so um, I might have some help for you here. <laughs> and I study some of this stuff because I'm just kind of like that. So. What we're going to talk about today is what does an emotionally safe person look like? And if if you find an emotionally safe person, then you don't have to worry if they're going to be a physically safe person because an emotionally safe person is not physically dangerous, okay? They the two go hand in hand. If the emotion if if a person is emotionally unsafe, now they have the potential to become physically dangerous. So, it's something to remember, okay? So, I'm going to give you a definition, and this definition comes from Dr. John Townsend. He is one of the world's most famous and sought-after psychologists. And um, his definition <clears throat> is something that I really agree with and something to think about, even if you're not a person of faith. I, I am. Um, but if you're not, it's okay. Um, so just take that into consideration. So this is his, this is his definition. Someone who influences me to be the person God intended me to be, helping me to inherit God's purpose for me with love, grace, growth, and success. Now, Dr. John Townsend wrote a book called Safe People. Uh, he co-wrote that with Dr. Henry Cloud, another incredibly famous psychologist. So if you're curious, please check it out. Um, but I'm going to give you some traits of what a safe person would act like. Okay, Remember how we always talk about it's all about patterns, all right? So some people... Everybody can act like an idiot sometimes, okay? If we have a bad day or, you know, we just touch on something that's overwhelming to us, we can, we can act really poorly, okay? But what we are looking for is a pattern, all right? So, important to remember. Okay, so here, here are some traits. One is a safe person wants and invites you to open your heart to them, and they will in turn open theirs to you. Okay, so what that looks like is when you're having a conversation with somebody, they are listening, they're paying attention, they can empathize, and when the time is appropriate, they can, I guess, draw a correlation without making it all about them, okay? That's a, that's a good trait, okay? So now you have open dialogue with this person, they're seeing your point, you're seeing theirs, all right? Um, the next one is... They don't look to look at you as something to further their purposes, right? So we've all kind of been used by people, and it, it really stinks, right? So what you're looking for is someone who encourages you, and you encourage them. It's a reciprocal relationship. You're both kind of um, just walking. You're doing life together, okay? And you're just trying to help each other get to the next step of where they think, where you think your life is going, okay? Um, now, when you'd open up to a safe person, they move closer to you emotionally and physically. And what I mean by that is that, you know, eye contact comes to you, they're paying attention to what you're talking about, they can relate, they, sometimes if you're talking about something that's really difficult, you can see on their face that they, um, they empathize and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry you're going through that instead of indifference, Okay. Um, I've also seen people sometimes where, you know, one person is telling a story about maybe something that was painful in their childhood and then somebody else just all of a sudden just picks up the tangent and starts talking about them and you're like, huh? Like, where did that come from? Okay. That's not a safe person. <laughs> okay. So just FYI. All right. Safe people are non-judgmental and are therefore okay with the bad stuff in your life because they know everyone has garbage, okay? Like, I love this person because they know if you got a pulse, you got issues. And they don't care what's going on in your life in the sense of trying to judge you for it. They don't pretend to be the judge and jury. They're not trying to condemn you. 
I love those people. They're probably my favorite people in the whole world. So I, I've noticed over the years of doing hair, you know, you get to hear the very private parts of people's lives. And I would say that I agree with research that has been done that says that when a victim, let's say you're, you're, you're a victim of maybe somebody's emotional, psychological, or even physical abuse, um, and as you try to get out of that relationship, you notice that other people are judging you and they talk about you behind your back or they even, maybe they even say it to your face. To be victimized by the people that are close to you is worse than being victimized by the other guy, okay? So don't do that. Don't be that person. That's not cool, okay? Because about the time that you do that, <laughs> it's going to turn around and come back on you. And even if it doesn't, it's just so damaging, okay? So understand that if a person is in an abusive relationship, it didn't get there overnight, okay? It comes on incrementally where the person is constantly questioning themselves, thinking, did that just happen? Or what's wrong with what I'm doing? And they just start to reason with themselves all the time. And pretty soon they wake up and they're like, oh my goodness, what has just happened? And how am I going to get out of this? Okay, so be kind. All right, safe people go out on a limb for you, not leaving you behind. Now, you might not be old enough or had enough things happen in your life to have your life fall apart. Um, if you have, you know what I'm talking about here. The people that really care about you and that are safe people, they rally around you and the other people scatter. And I always thought, you know, when that happened, that... It was a very blessed time in my life because it was never too early to find out who my real friends were. And it's important to understand that to have real friends, you don't have very many in life. You know, we have a lot, always have a lot of acquaintances, but the ones that'll stick their neck out for you and they're not gonna, I mean, they'd die for you if they had to, that is few and far between. So my suggestion is if you find a person like that, be that for a person for them too, all right? Okay. Safe peace people also do not gossip, okay? Most of this list came from John Townsend um, and probably Henry Cloud also. Uh, I'm adding a couple. This one I add because working in salons for almost 20 years, gossip is rampant and it destroys relationships. I call it cancer to relationships, okay? And once my clients figured out that I really liked confidentiality, they would tell me more but then I'd go back in the break room and I would hear somebody else talking about one of their clients in an incredibly personal way. This should have never been repeated. And that if the client had known, they would be horrified. Now imagine how horrifying that is to have your quote, friends do that. Not cool. Now if you're around a person that is a gossiper, if you feel comfortable, say, um, have you talked to that person about that? And if they say, no, you know, just say, I'd encourage you to do that and then change the subject. Now, if this person continues to try to gossip around you, just walk away. You know, I, I'm kind of the queen of changing a subject, like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but um, I forgot to tell you this, you know, and then I just changed the subject. But if you can't think that quick, you know, if you're tired or whatever, and you just can't think of something, just, just, just try to walk away. Oh, really? Okay. And then just walk away. All right? Don't partake. Okay, because you're going to be tagged as the gossiper too, and you don't want that. So while you're thinking about this, though, I want you to understand that um, sometimes we, you know, we need people in our life to help us if we have had a broken people picker for a while. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about why we have a broken people picker. Um, but um, as John Townsend would say, we kind of need a group of people that we can allow to speak into our life. So we can be honest with, we can say, hey... You know, I have this situation going on, or maybe you're dating somebody and you need to be honest with these people, expose them to this person that you're dating, and give them an opinion, okay? And then listen. If somebody says, mm, that does not look right, listen, because your people picker is broken, so you need some help, all right? Don't be shy about that until, until you get to the point where you're kind of feeling a little more comfortable with your decision making. Use these people, and even then, still run it by, okay? Plans fail for lack of wise counsel. It's very true. So I would just encourage you to do that. Um, 
And I just want you to understand that you're not alone. You know, it's really tough to find safe people. It is nowhere near as easy as you think it is. Um, I know a lot of people that, um, you know, kind of have that judgment about them because, you know, they, you know, maybe they found a really nice spouse and it worked out for 60 years. Great for them because, you know, it takes two people to make a relationship work and be healthy and it only takes one person to destroy it. One, okay? So you can be that healthy person and the other person is still destructive and there's nothing, you know, you can do about that but walk away sometimes. And I always really just felt bad for people who got blindsided, me included, I've been there. Um, and if they would have had some of these, this information and they would have been like, oh, Oh, okay, you're probably not the kind of guy I want to be around or girl. You know, there's plenty of unsafe girls out there for sure. So anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, if you like it, please hit the thumbs up and pass it on to your friends. I would love it if you guys sent me some questions. That would totally rock. Um, love to speak. So if you um, would love for me to come and speak at your organization, pass it on to the people in charge and maybe we can get something worked out. Um, and feel free to come on over to whatwouldyourhairdressersay.com and subscribe to the channel too. I'll see you on the web.